Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to uh, what is the, now the new NADP accreditation scheme. Um, uh, and this is a presentation that should give you a broad overview of the scheme. My name is Paddy Turner. I'm currently the chair of the accreditation standing committee um, and uh, uh, in control of all things accreditation at the moment with the, with the support of colleagues on the board of directors. So um, the new accreditation scheme um, has been designed specifically to reflect the very broad range of disability practitioner membership that we have. National Association of Disability Practitioners is a broad church, as we all know, it has disability advisors, it has assessors, it has people working um, in all areas, both higher education institutions and private organisations. And it was important that whatever scheme we developed was accessible to all those. Um, and when you're embarking on developing something new, uh, it's not uncommon to have a look around and try and find something that uh, you can use as a, as, a, as a shape or a starter or a kickstarter. To, to help in the development of your scheme. And uh, what we found, I had been working with the UK Professional Standards Framework for HE Teaching, which is, um, well, exactly as it sounds. And it, the framework that existed there is very successful. There's over 130,000 people already uh, accredited using that scheme. And it seemed to me that there was potential for um, using that as the basis of something that we could develop for the National Association of Disability Practitioners. And crucially, one of the things that the uh, UK PSF framework does is exactly what we were looking to achieve, which is we wanted to ensure that members were reflecting on their practice, on their actual experience as they go about their work. We wanted people to evidence their practice rather than be thinking or talking or trying to provide evidence based just on simply on theory. So what we're looking for um, in all submissions is positive outcomes arising from your practice and your experience and how then that goes on to meet the standards that we lay out. Now, clearly, when you're developing something new, you uh, want to test it first and, and it has been through two different pilot tests and it has been refined considerably as the process went on. And we've taken a lot of feedback, feedback on board. Um, one of the, whoops, double click, didn't mean to do that. One of the things that we found most heartening through the pilots was the, the, the great positivity that people themselves felt in going through the scheme. And there were sort of three broad areas that from the feedback they provided, I thought it was worth highlighting. The benefits of going through this scheme um, for many were reputational. Uh, and these comments came directly from uh, evaluations that we uh, asked for. So uh, my manager was surprised to read through my application. She had no idea of the wide range of my role and influence. Uh, another person said, I found that senior accreditation enhanced my reputation at work. And another said, love the fact that I can put the initials after my name. I'm already being asked about them. Um, then there are developmental benefits as well. Um, the course was well worth doing. I say course, it isn't really a course, but that was the language they used. The course was well worth doing. I have learned a lot about my own approach to my job. It was great to have to make the space to actually reflect on my caseload. I feel it is very important to take time to reflect on your personal journey in your roles. So this is people expressing clearly the uh, development benefits that they received from taking part in the scheme. And finally, there was a whole area where people found it uh, actually rewarding, personally rewarding. Um, I thought the accreditation process was challenging, but also very rewarding. And I love that because I think 
reward often comes through going through challenge. My manager was very supportive in his reference. I felt really valued. I was initially apprehensive, but this journey has been so beneficial and rewarding. I'm very glad I signed up. And I, and I think it's only fair to say that the general tenor of the feedback that we got through the pilots was yes, there was some useful criticism of specific aspects that we were able to uh, moderate and change, but the general tenor was one of great positivity and that, that's really heartening to hear and to know. So some basics around the scheme itself. Um, are you eligible for accreditation? We currently have awards in two categories. We have the accredited member and senior accredited member. Um, the eligibility requirements for both are basically around two specific things and quite simple. One is you must be an NADP member. And the second is based on experience. So remember, I said at the beginning, this is an experiential scheme. You're having to demonstrate that you meet the standards through drawing on your own experience and practice. Well, clearly you can't do that unless you've already been working in the field in some shape or form. So accredited member, you need to have been working for three years, full-time equivalent as a disability practitioner, not necessarily an FEHE, but working with disabled people and in some shape or form as a disability practitioner. And one year of that must be working in the FEHE sector. And for senior accredited member, we're talking about five years full-time equivalent as a disability practitioner. And that must include three years at least working in the FEHE sector. Now this, uh, this presentation is not designed as it stands to go into huge detail around the background. You can get that from the website. So I'm not going to say any more around the specifics that you need to achieve for accredited member or senior accredited member and what the differences are, um, but they are not solely based on experience. This is not just about how long you have been working in the sector. OK, so the uh, framework, we're calling it the NADP framework for the accreditation of professional standards, uh, the framework. And it's based around these five things. The framework encompasses these five things. Uh, firstly, it outlines the core dimensions and elements of the disability practitioner's role. So we're talking about what activities do you undertake? What knowledge do you need in order to be able to undertake those activities successfully? And what values should you be committed to in order to um, maintain a positive and appropriate approach to your work and a professional approach to your work. Now, I've used the word core dimensions here. We're not talking about all the activities you might undertake or all the knowledge you might have or all the values you might hold. Um, but these are the core ones, remember, that need to be able to mean something and have relevance to all the NADP members. So activities, for example, include providing advice and guidance to either disabled students and or disabled staff. As simple as that. There's a whole range of different arenas in which that advice and guidance might be held. So that's just an example of an activity. And obviously the detail of all those activities, knowledge and values are found on our website. So if you're demonstrating those activities, knowledge and values, you also need a set of criteria against which you as disability practitioners can be measured to ascertain you meet the required standards. That's also part of the framework, as is the means by which you can provide that evidence. In other words, the kind of forms that we provide for you to show that evidence on and the different formats that you can deliver that evidence to us in. So for example, during the pilot, one person who went through the pilot scheme was a profoundly deaf BSL user who used sign language to provide their evidence. Uh, number four of this list, appropriate quality systems to enable fair and equitable reviewing, decision making and ongoing development of the scheme. 
So it's very important that we don't just let it sit there, but also we need to make sure that our decisions, just like um, awards in higher education generally, are fair and equitable. So we have reviewers who are trained. They three reviewers will look at every submission. There will be a panel to decide uh, and sh share those different reviewing decisions and make sure that they all match. Uh, and, and we have an oversight group which will meet on an annual basis to look back through the, the outcomes over the year to check that there is consistency in decision making. And finally, uh, the provision of information and guidance to support you in applying for your accreditation. So obviously that includes this, this video, for example, this seminar. Equally, uh, it includes a, a lot of advice and guidance on the website itself. So uh, that's a very, very uh, high level overview. So what would you do next if you were interested in applying for accreditation? Well, look at that guidance and support I've just been referencing, the materials on our web website. Um, this is an organic site, so it will keep developing and we will be adding new materials and new, new elements that we hope will improve the support that we're providing. Um, those who went through the panel, uh, th sorry, went through the pilot, they used these resources and also um, gave us some valuable feedback to help us enhance and extend and develop those resources. So we hope that they're sufficient. Uh, they were for the pilot members. Um, a bit of advice, download and use the application forms that are on there. They're really helpful. Feedback from the pilot members said, said, indicated that they were very helpful in keeping them focused and steering your way through the process and making sure you complete all the relevant elements of the submission that are required. This guidance is open to you at any stage. You do not have have to be um, registered for the scheme in order to access this guidance and this is quite deliberate so you can start to think about examples of your practice that you could use as evidence you can even draft your whole submission so what we're really saying to you is when you are fully ready when you feel absolutely capable that within the 12 month window that we're 12 week window that we will give you you're going to be able to complete um, that's the time to register and put yourself as part of the scheme um, and make sure that you make the payment. The payment is £110 for accredited member and £160 for senior accredited member. And that is reflected of, reflective of the amount of work that we as an organisation would have to put in uh, to reviewing uh, those submissions. So as you might imagine, for senior accredited member, there is considerable about more evidence required and therefore more evidence to review. Uh, engage with the materials and support available and plan your time to enable submission within the deadline. Do it as early as you can so that you know the kinds of time lengths that it's going to take for you to go through the process as a whole. OK, so we have two cohorts annually. Uh, again, this is built very much on um, the feedback we got from those who went through the pilot scheme. Deadlines we found that we found from the feedback were very helpful. So there'll be an official start uh, for cohort one sometime in the first week of January. So this is the basic structure but the specific dates will be posted on the NADP website on an annual basis. So you will officially start, you can register in advance of that, but you will officially start in the first week of January and your deadline then will be the middle of March. That we will then go through the process of reviewing the submissions that have come in by that time with a final outcome to the applicant for cohort one in mid-May. Cohort two will start in the first week of May. So there'll be just a tiny bit of overlap there. Um, uh, same sort of process with the final outcome to, to the applicant in mid-September. And you'll notice we've left 
that dreaded period where we were all ridiculously busy um, from September to uh, Christmas to December uh, free of any activity, although you're perfectly at liberty to engage with the website and start uh, preparing submissions if you were wanting to be part of cohort one or two. At the moment, we are uh, having a maximum number of people per cohort of 24. That's because of the amount of people we have as reviewers and the, the level of numbers that we could cope with in order to make sure that the scheme continues to operate efficient, efficiently. Hopefully we will be able to extend and expand that, expand that number, but it'll all depend uh, on demand. Okay, so that's the uh, grand overview of the scheme. As I've said to you before, lots and lots of stuff on the website uh, for you to peruse and have a look through uh, with information and guidance for you. Uh, exemplars, for example, of submissions. We have um, uh, resources that you can look at. So pl plenty uh, of materials there. And if you have any further questions, please contact the NADP office uh, at admin at nadp-uk.org. Thank you for watching.